Max, more than ever, please hit that air raid siren. It's time for Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout, of course, when we overreact to the football weekend. And holy cannoli, guys, do we have some overreacting to do. Let's start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, the Big Bang. What could you possibly be talking about? So, you know, I don't want to get into a conversation about how the world started and why we're here and existentialism. But there is a common belief in in scientific circles that the Earth came along <laughs> at the very beginning because of a giant explosion in space. Giant explosion started everything. With the Texas high school football playoffs, a giant explosion has started everything. <laughs> um, and I think it's worth mentioning. This is... Not how it always goes. Usually, no. yeah. usually, we get one in the first round of the playoffs. There will be one. One. Yeah. There was always one game Maybe in the first round. Two. Everyone focuses Maybe on two. it. Oh, look at that. Maybe yeah. two. Yeah. But we had like six or seven. Yeah. <laughs> six or seven ones that you go, whoa. And we also, by the way, had another like four or five that were like this close mm. to happening too. You have to keep your eye on those. The three big ones. Spearman beats Cisco in 3A Division II. And this was an unbeaten Cisco team, a team I had, I believe, winning that region, Region 1, in 3A Division II. Now it seems like there's nothing stopping a Canadian Childress, although Childress struggled, yeah. rode the struggle bus a little bit. Yep. Um, that one was, that, that's one that I think comes in third place on your gasp o meter. The second place one, for me, is Mesquite Horn over Temple. Now, I've gone on record. How is that number two? Oh, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> we got more. I've gone on record. Yeah, we got a whole bag of them. <laughs> We've got, I've gone on record. When they were 0-7, I think I might have said on television. Mm -hmm. Most dangerous. Mes that Mesquite Horn is yeah. the greatest 0-7 team in Texas high school football history. Yeah. Because the schedule they had we run did. had been brutal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brutal. And But they, they win their final three. They get into the playoffs. Your reward, you got to go to Wildcat Stadium and play Temple. You got to play. You got to play Horn. Jermaine Givens put on the cape in a way that we had never seen before. Ooh, boy. And Mesquite Horn goes down and shocks Temple at Wildcat Stadium and knocks, knocks out the Wildcats. Now, there's going to be a lot of wringing of hands and a lot of gnashing of teeth and a lot of people talking about Temple losing that last game, Week 11, to avoid going to Longview. Now, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not inside the coaching staff's heart. I don't know what happened. All I know is that they did lose that final game. Yeah. If they had won that game, they would have gone to Longview. And let's be real. If they had gone to Longview, based on this result, Probably would have lost. anybody think that they were going to beat Longview? <laughs> I do not. I don't think. I don't know. I have very we're, another existential moment. Yeah. I don't know if I believe in karma. I don't know if I do. Here's what I do believe. I believe lo losing is contagious. Mm -hmm. And I think when you go eight and zero, and then you lose a heartbreaker to your rival in midway. Mm -hmm. And then you lose in week 11, however it w came about, to Copper's Cove. Yeah. I think sometimes it's easy to forget how to win. And I think Mesquite Horn threw a punch, and suddenly Temple realized, wait a second, wait a second. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 no, Ooh, no, no. They're, they're We're four, supposed to do They're 4-7. They're 4-7. No, seven. They're, they're, what's they're, what's they're, happening? No, no, no. Yeah. This is a 3-win three three, team. Yeah, 3-7. and seven. A stunning, stunning upset yeah. as Mesquite Horn beats Temple. And that's the second biggest one. <laughs> Because the one, because I'll be honest, if you if you came to me on Wednesday, last Wednesday, and you said, "Hey, I'm from the future. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the results of the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, and Horn beats Temple. I'd be like, "Whoa, well, that's crazy." Okay, I mean, I mean, Horn's pretty good, but man, that's okay. Wow. If you had come to me and said, "Hey, I'm from the future," and Richardson Pierce beats Cedar Hill, I would have said, "I'm calling the police." <laughs> <laughs> that is. I think a top five upset in the last 10 years. Our unanimous region one pick for 6A Division 2. Cedar Hill. Unanimous. All four of us on the staff. At home. 
For Richardson Pierce, and we're going to talk with David Collins in a moment, and I'm mm -hmm. going to try to be respectful, but Richardson Pierce is a team we did not think about mm -hmm. when the brackets came out. Mm -hmm. The brackets came out, and we said, oh, who's Cedar Hill going to see in the second round? Right. That's exactly, that's what, I think that's what everybody in the world did. Yeah. But Pierce came in, and the defense played with its hair on fire. They forced five turnovers, and I think if you talk to Cedar Hill folks, they're going to say, we didn't play well at all. And it's got to be both. But props to Richardson Pierce, who have turned everything upside down. A huge, huge win for the Mustangs. And now Cedar Hill's out. And this is all very post hoc. Mm -hmm. I recognize this is post hoc. But we maybe should have seen this coming. Because the two weeks leading up to the DeSoto game, remember, we were sitting here saying, man, boy, Cedar Hill had to eke it out over South Grand Prairie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that boy, they're just kind of playing with their food a little bit. Just I don't know. But then DeSoto rolls around. They turn it Good on. They smoke DeSoto. They were the dominant force in the game against DeSoto. And I think we all said, it was like, boom, okay. that's a regional champion they right there. They turned it on. Yeah. They flipped the switch. Watch out for Cedar Hill. The switch got flipped back. <laughs> And for Richards and Pierce to go on the road to Longhorn Stadium and beat Cedar Hill is a stunner. Big bang. That's our first thought. Thought number two, hired to be fired. It is a stark reminder that in college football, there's a lot of stuff we can talk about college football. We'll talk with Shehan J. Raja here in a moment. It is an important reminder this week that you only rent college coaching jobs. <laughs> Nobody has them forever. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened this week and with Everett Withers getting fired at Texas State. Um, he got fired, and, and I think that you would look at the record and you would say, okay, I get it. I mm -hmm. understand why they fired him. There are a number of undercurrents, I think, going mm -hmm. on politically. I know you're a little bit more in tune with this. Sure. But I know the AD is not the most popular guy on campus. Yeah, a lot of people think this might be a kind of a, a scapegoat firing, yes. potentially. Um, we'll see. But Texas State is open. Yeah. Um, Everett Withers. I thought that because Texas State was trending up, mm -hmm. I thought because of that he would get one more year. Right. That's kind of how I felt. They mm -hmm. were. Too, I mean, even this even this past week. Right. They played really well against a pretty Start, darn good Troy. Starting team. quarterback out. He threw five picks, four or five picks. Uh, Tyler Vitt, the yeah. backup quarterback, and they lost twelve to seven against a really good Troy team. Really good Troy team. So on the road. On the road. So like it was like, okay, maybe they are trending up. And yeah. like you consider the past couple weeks as well. Mm -hmm. They've been competitive except for last week, uh, versus App State. But everything else It's been trending, trending up. Trending up. Yeah. So it, it's it's just a stark reminder that that time is fleeting. Yeah. And especially for college football coaches. So Texas State will have another head coach. Um Read Ishmael's fine work on TexasFootball.com. You're going to have another piece up today about potential candidates. Yeah, I'm going to have another. Uh, I wrote a column, kind of his postmortem on what the Everett Withers era meant mm -hmm. to Texas State, why I think he was a necessary hire in the first place. And uh, later on today, hopefully, we'll have some candidates that um, I'm coming up with. Uh, you know, these aren't these aren't founded in actual research or reporting <laughs> on my part. Uh, this is just like logical fits, mm -hmm. realistic fits, more dr pipe dream hires, things like that. Uh, that'll be up later today. Thought number two. Thought number three, and then there were eleven. There are twelve reigning, defending, undisputed state champions right now. And now there are 11 that can still defend it as Rockdale goes down to Grandview. Everyone else is still alive. Um, College Station survived Mesquite Poteet, but they will now be in a state championship, state champion elimination game with Highland Park this week. Uh, everyone else kind of took care of their own business. Uh, but there are now only 11 defending champs in the state of Texas. Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker for all we talk about um, teams that won. I want to make sure we give a shout-out to Dallas Skyline quarterback Velton Gardner. This kid, holy cow, very nearly took Skyline over DeSoto, which would have been another stunner. 363 yards and three touchdowns passing and 118 yards and four touchdowns rushing in a wild game with DeSoto. He's quietly been doing this all year. He really oh, yeah. has been. He's been great. It's sad to see that, that end this year, but uh, Dallas Skyline quarterback Velton Gardner gets a helmet sticker. A helmet sticker to the TCU defense. <laughs> uh wow you guys woke up how about that <laughs> big win over baylor we'll talk about with shahan J. Raja coming up here in just a little bit and boskyville wide receiver marcel estelle six catches 151 yards and four touchdowns receiving for marcel estelle he gets a helmet sticker as well three teams to watch clarendon 
We had a number of fours over ones. Clarendon takes down nine and one Rawls. They are through to the next round. Congratulations to Clarendon. Keep an eye on them. Incarnate Word and Lamar into the FCS playoffs. Into the FCS playoffs. <laughs> How they got there, I don't know, but they're in. Yeah. So keep an eye on Incarnate Both Word and Lamar. Both of them are seven and four, but they snuck in. Congratulations yep. to Eric Morris and company. That's, a, that's huge for them, and Lamar as well. Uh, remarkable, remarkable stuff they are in. And San Antonio Reagan, do you guys see this? Do you guys see like it's not? It wasn't. It wouldn't have been a stunner if they beat, beat O'Connor. O'Connor, right? But they pummeled him. They they clobbered him. <laughs> really that impressive. Was, I looked. That was one of the scores of this weekend that you mentioned. Uh, we mentioned upsets, and it mm-hmm. was like, oh, that one. Yeah, you just kind of saw how, how that was unfolding. That's it's like, like a, oh my goodness, stylistic upset. Right, yeah. right. Uh, but that's a three teams watch. Three to see. Uh, Manville and Huntsville. Let's go. Really Ooh. excited about this one. I'll if be you there. and and two teams that kind of went different directions in round one, mm-hmm. uh, Manville struggled for a while with Barbers Hill. Huntsville was dominant in their win. Keep an eye on this one. I'm excited about that I'm one. Go and do it. Do you want to come with me, Tepper? Where is the game? NRG. Are you going for the whole triple header or whatever? Uh, not though. I won't be there for all three, but I'll be there for the first two. I can't, unfortunately. If you see Max, on, give him a hug. I'm on baby house arrest. Don't give me a hug. I'll punch you. Texas A&M and LSU, a lot of great games this week, including Texas and Kansas in a very important game for the Longhorns. But A&M and LSU, if Jimbo Fisher wants to prove things are different, here's a chance to prove things are different. And Gunner and Lexington. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another game we've been excited about. This game is finally coming down. We're excited about Gunner and Lexington. Those are three to see, and that is Monday morning fallout.